In the last lecture, we looked at translational symmetry in two dimensions. And we saw that there were five different Brave lattices in two dimensions. In this lecture, we're going to extend those ideas into three dimensions, which of course is the dimensionality of nearly all the crystals that we're going to encounter. So in three dimensions, the unit cell First of all, it's not a parallelogram anymore, obviously, but it is an object called a parallelopiped. And the parallelopiped has six faces, and the opposite faces are parallel to each other, and each face is itself a parallelogram. So the most symmetric kind of three-dimensional unit cell is the cube, and that leads to a lattice called cubic. And of course, intuitively, everybody knows what I mean when I say a cube, unit cell vectors are all equal to each other, and they're all at right angles to each other. So you could imagine this as starting from a square 2D lattice and then adding a third perpendicular vector. If we were to make that third perpendicular vector to be longer or shorter than the lattice vectors that define the square base, then we would get this crystal system called tetragonal. Okay, where you see that two faces of the unit cell are squares and the other four are rectangles. Here, the third lattice vector, by definition C, is no longer equal to the other two lattice vectors, but the three lattice vectors are still at right angles with respect to each other. If we make all three lattice vectors of differing lengths, but yet at right angles to each other, then we get an orthorhombic unit cell, and in the orthorhombic unit cell, each face of the unit cell is a rectangle. If you were to start from the cube and, let's say, stretch the cube from opposite corners, you would get this unit cell that's shown here, which is rhombohedral, where all three lattice vectors are the same length, and the angle between them is the same, but it's not equal to any specific value. They're no longer at right angles to each other. Okay, in this case, each face of the unit cell is a rhombus. If we were to take the two-dimensional hexagonal unit cell and then add a third vector that was perpendicular to the first two, we would have what's called a hexagonal three-dimensional lattice. If you were to start from a base that was oblique, that is some kind of parallelogram with no particular uh, relations between the sides or the angle, then you can get two unit cells from that. One, if the third vector is perpendicular to the other two, that's called monoclinic. Usually by definition, it's B is perpendicular to the other two, and that's the only symmetry element that we have. But if the third lattice vector is at some kind of oblique angle to the first two, so that means A, B, and C are all different, and the angles between the three lattice vectors are all different, that kind of unit cell is called triclinic. So these are the three-dimensional primitive Brave lattices. Now, just as in two dimensions, we could also have centered lattices. But in three dimensions, there's more than one way to have a centered lattice. So the most obvious way, perhaps, would be to put a lattice point at the center of the three-dimensional unit cell, which is shown here. And when we do that, we get a body-centered lattice. Okay, so the lattice point that's at the center of the unit cell has to be equivalent in every way to the lattice point that's at the vertex or corner of the unit cell. Uh, the symbol for a body-centered lattice is I. Uh, what this also means is everywhere in the crystal where we have uh, an atom, that means there has to be at one half of the A lattice vector, one half of the B lattice vector, and one half of the C lattice vector. If we were displaced by that much, we have to move to another atom that is equivalent to the one we started at. We can also center by putting an equivalent lattice point at the center of two opposite faces. Okay, that's called a base-centered lattice. So when the face that's centered is, um, let's say, perpendicular to the C-axis, 
So that is that this is the A vector, this is the B vector. Then this base-centered lattice is called a C-centered lattice. If we were to put the two centering lattice points in the face defined by A and C, that is the face that's perpendicular to the B-axis, then that would be called a B-centered lattice, and you can also have an A-centered lattice. In each of these two cases, the body-centered lattice and the base-centered lattice, the volume of the centered unit cell must be twice as big as the volume of the primitive unit cell because we have two lattice points per unit cell in the centered lattice. But there's yet one more kind of centered lattice, and, and that is one where we put an equivalent lattice point at the center of each of the six faces of the unit cell. And when we do that, we get something called a face-centered lattice. Now, just as we saw in two dimensions, we don't have a centered lattice for every primitive lattice. In two dimensions, the only centered lattice was the centered rectangular lattice. For exactly the same reasons, we don't see all possibilities of centering for every primitive lattice. So for a triclinic lattice, I mean, there is no centered lattice because the primitive cell itself would be triclinic. So if the centered cell is triclinic and the primitive cell is triclinic, we're going to just pick the smaller primitive cell. At the other end of the extreme, you have the orthorhombic system where you can have base-centered, body-centered, and face-centered Bravais lattices. So when you put all of this together, it turns out there are 14 Bravais lattices in three dimensions. And so all crystals have one of these 14 Bravais lattices. Now, here is a graphical representation of those uh, 14 different lattices. And as I said a couple of slides back, there are symbols for those. P for a primitive lattice, I for a body-centered lattice, F for a face-centered lattice, and usually C, but sometimes A or B for a base-centered lattice. Now, if we were to look at the primitive unit cell and the centered unit cell for a couple of those centered lattices. It's, it's kind of instructive. I mean, at the top here, we see we have the face-centered cubic unit cell. So we have a lattice point at each corner of the cube, and then we have an equivalent lattice point at the center of each face of the cube. And so this unit cell actually contains four lattice points per unit cell. The ones at the corner belong one-eighth in the unit cell. Eight corners times one-eighth is one lattice point. And these ones on the faces, the, each lattice point on the face is one-half inside the unit cell. So since there's six faces, six times one-half is three additional lattice points. So one plus three is four. We have four lattice points in a face center cubic unit cell. But you can draw a completely analogous primitive cell that's shown down here. And in that case, the unit cell is a rhombus, or it's a rhombohedral unit cell, but it's a special kind of rhombohedral cell because the angles between the lattice vectors now are exactly 60 degrees. And that rhombohedral unit cell there has a volume that's one-fourth of the centered unit cell. One thing that is a little bit confusing uh, is this relationship between rhombohedral unit cells and hexagonal unit cells. So in a rhombohedral unit cell, if you think about it, stretching a cube along its body diagonal is going to retain one threefold axis. Turns out that a cube has uh, threefold axes along each of its body diagonals. So we can say that in a rhombohedral lattice, we're going to have a threefold rotation axis. As we saw last lecture, it's also possible for a hexagonal lattice to have a threefold rotation axis. So it turns out that every rhombohedral unit cell, here I've got one that's shown in orange, can also be represented by an equivalent hexagonal unit cell that is centered and three times larger. And that hexagonal unit cell would be shown here. So we'd have lattice points at the corners, but we'd have additional 
equivalent lattice points here at two-thirds the A lattice vector plus one-third the B lattice vector plus one-third the C lattice vector. And this point up here would be um, one-third, two-third, two-third. Okay? So in the rhombohedrally centered hexagonal cell, we have three lattice points.